Okay? It's got nothing to do with the prayer you might say before a meal. Grace in the Bible just means an undeserved gift. This is talking about God's gift to us. And who wants to be our first volunteer and come up and open up the first part of God's present? Yep, Kezia, you can come on up. Let's get it open. Let's see what God gives us. First of all, can you just get him out? And can you hold him up for everyone to see? Here he is. It's the baby Jesus, born 2,000 years ago that first Christmas. Thank you very much, because God's gift to us is about our Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? God's gift isn't just about the baby Jesus. It's about what he did. Though he was rich, he became poor. Because God's gift to us is a riches to rags story. Let's put Jesus down here a second. And for this bit, I think we need our rich ometer. Can you all see this? This is my scale to measure how rich someone is. And it works in units of one rich. So if you are one rich rich, it means you are as rich as rich. Is that clear? <laughs> so I think we'd better put him down here, hadn't we? Rich is one rich rich. But I need some more volunteers now to come and put some other people on the richometer. So who wants to come out? Yes, Will, let's have you. And our first person is Harry Kane, the Premiership footballer. How rich do you think rich is? I mean, Harry Kane. Do you think he's 100 times richer than rich? 100,000? 1,000? Where do you think he should go? Um, 10,000. 10,000 10, riches! Oh, he's very rich indeed. Let's put him there so we can still see the label. Let's have another volunteer. Who wants to come? Yes, Livy, you can come up because our next person is... The Queen. Oh, now she kind of technically owns the whole country, doesn't she? So where do you think she should go on this scale? Mm. Right up there, 100,000 maybe? Well done, thank you very much. Let's put her up here. And one more. Let's have, who was? Ethan, come on up. Our last person is... Mark Hadoshi. It's our parish assistant. He works for the church. Where do you think he should go? Do you think Mark's got more money than rich or less money than rich? <laughs> Ten times, really? <laughs> Why are you working for a church, Mark? <laughs> okay, well, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to put him slightly further down, but a good effort. Now, what, of course, the real question is, is what about Jesus? Because he was rich, wasn't he? Boy, we have no idea. He was the son of God. He was there with God before the world began. God made the world through him. In fact, in our first reading, it talked about Jesus being equal with God and being in very nature God. And long before he was a baby, Jesus was being praised by armies of angels for his beauty and his power and his wisdom and his glory. And so we really do need to put Jesus right up here. In fact, Jesus should really be off the scale altogether, shouldn't he? Because asking how, how rich is Jesus is kind of like asking in the Harry Potter universe, how rich is J.K. Rowling? I mean, it's a silly question. She invented the whole place. It wouldn't be there if it wasn't for her. How can you put Jesus on the richness scale when he invented the scale? But there he is, far above everyone else. And yet, can you see... He became poor. He became poor. The everlasting Son of God became a man. In fact, he became a baby. Our first reading talks about him making himself nothing and being found in appearance as a man. And so I need a few more volunteers to get out the rest of our present. Who wants to come on up? Someone who hasn't been up? Bethan, you look nice and strong. Can you come up? Get this big thing out of the present. What have we got here? This one here. Can you lift this? Very good. Show everyone. It's the manger. Because Jesus went from the throne of heaven 
to lying in the animal's feeding box. And we better put this down here at the poor end of the scale, because a manger isn't a rich thing, is it? It's a very poor thing. Thank you, Bethan. Can we have a couple more volunteers? Let's have... Who hasn't been up yet? Kezia? No, you've been up. My bad. Charlie, out you come. Can you pick this very little thing just there in the corner? Can you show everyone? It's a dummy! Because the one who made the world just by speaking had to babble and learn to talk. Can you stick that in the manger? Next volunteer, let's have Hannah Tiptoft. Can you grab this thing here? And what is it? Show everyone. It's a nursery book. Don't press that. Because (laughs) the one who had all the wisdom and knowledge of God had to go to school and learn to write his name. I really hope that shuts up. And let's have one more volunteer. Let's have, yes, Elisabella, why don't you come out and pick up that big floppy thing at the back. Can you hold that up for us? Well done. That is a nappy, isn't it? Because, that's a big one, because he, thank you very much, because he went from the praise of angels, he went from the praise of angels to dribbling and puking and hitting Mary in the face and needing his nappy changed. It is a huge step down. It is far bigger than like me becoming an ant or something. It is the author stepping into the story. He went from designing mangers to lying in one. He really did go from right up here to right down there. And you know what? You know what? The manger. The manger isn't even the end of the story. Because, let's have one last volunteer to get the last thing out of the box. Yeah, do you want to come up from that row there? Can you make it out? Can you get the last, this last thing out of the box for us? Come on up. Great. Can you grab that there from the box? And can you hold it up for everyone? It's a cross. Because Jesus, he was born in someone else's stable. And he was buried in someone else's grave. And in between, he lived a life of being poor and sometimes homeless and insulted. And he died in the end on a horrible Roman cross. Thank you very much. It is such a massive step down. Thank you, thank you. In fact, if anyone's watched a Disney film, you might know Cinderella went from being a kitchen maid to being a princess. Or Aladdin went from being a street boy to marrying the princess. But Jesus went the other way, didn't he? He went from riches to rags. A huge step down. And we ought to be thinking, why? And we'll think about that just as soon as we've sung our song. So the band are going to come out and lead us in this. And we're all going to get to our feet and sing. No one is good, no one is holy before God. I need someone to cleanse me. again for helpless sinners like me what a mighty mighty saviour you are what a mighty mighty saviour you are you can wash away my sin you can change my heart within 
What a mighty, mighty Saviour you are. No one is good, no one is holy before God. I need someone to cleanse me. No one is pure, no one is righteous in your sight. Again. For how blessed are I me? What a mighty, mighty Saviour you are. What a mighty, mighty Saviour you are. You can wash away my sin. You can change my Thanks very much, Daisy and the band. Everyone take a seat. And I've got a question for us. Do we, did we notice in the Bible verse that we read, did we notice why Jesus took such a big step down? It's there, isn't it? Isn't it? For your sake. So that you through his poverty might become rich. So the other half of God's gift is a rags to riches story. He became poor so that we might become rich. Nothing to do with becoming a vicar. But, you know what? We have to get that this is not talking about Jesus giving us money or toys or holidays or anything else. This is talking about Jesus giving us true riches. And so I think we need to change the scale. I think we need to make this a true richometer. And a true richometer only measures one thing. How rich is your relationship with God? How rich is your friendship with God? And on this scale, I think we need to realise that by ourselves, us, and Rich, and Mark Kadoshi, and Harry Kane, and even the Queen, by ourselves, we are right down here at the bottom. Because by ourselves, we do not want to be friends with God. God gives us every day the most amazing gifts, life, and abilities and a beautiful creation and every day we take the gifts and ignore the giver. It is a bit like someone gave us the most amazing Christmas present every year and we, and we just took it and didn't even look at the person. Never mind say thank you. That's how we treat God and his gifts. And so, we are spiritually poor. We are right down here. But you know what? Jesus, with all his true riches, with all his perfect relationship with God, right up here on the true riches scale, Jesus looked down at us, us with our selfish little faces turned away from him us thinking we're rich and he loved us and he said tell you what I will come down and I will become one of you I I will be born and I will die Jesus said I will take on your poorness In fact, Jesus said, on the cross, I will take on your spiritual poorness. I will be treated like the one who's ignored God. I will suffer and die, Jesus said, so that you can be treated like perfect children of God. So that you can enjoy God forever. In short, Jesus says... 
I will bind myself to you. And then, this is the bit that might go wrong. Jesus says that when I become spiritually poor, When I become spiritually poor, Jesus says, you will become spiritually rich. Ready? Jesus offers, Jesus offers us this connection with him. He offers us himself and he offers it to anyone who stops trying to save themselves and lets him do it. And what a gift, eh? What a gift. And this is nothing like the Dursley's gift to Harry Potter, is it? This is something that is generous beyond measure. This is nothing like my, uh, my friend's aunt's gift of tea, because Jesus knows what we actually need, and he gives it to us. Even though we maybe don't admit it, it's nothing like the sculpture that didn't actually cost Abramovich very much, because this gift cost Jesus. What a step down. It cost, us, cost him more than we can possibly imagine. What is this gift? Tell us about the one who gave it. <coughs> Frankly, you tell me. Wouldn't it be great to be able to remember this, this Christmas? You know what, when we're opening our presents, it is so easy just to focus on the super sparkly Lego unicorn blaster or whatever it is, and maybe if we're lucky we might say thank you to the person who gave it, but wouldn't it be great when we've got all these presents that we don't deserve, to, re- you, to let that remind us that God gave us the best present ever that we didn't deserve, and stop and say thank you to him. And I want to finish just by mentioning a couple more ways that I think this makes a massive difference to us this Christmas. So a couple quick things. First of all, it changes our Christmases, I think. Because why do we spend so much of the season of joy and goodwill feeling stressed and miserable? It's because we think we need to put on the perfect Christmas. We think the food, the family time, the fun, it's all got to be just right. That is how to be truly rich at Christmas, we think. And it is stressful beyond belief. But what if we really get this? What if we really get that Jesus has made us truly rich? Then it takes all the pressure off, doesn't it? Of course I still want to serve the people around me, but I can be relaxed about not having the perfect Christmas because I am secure. And one other, one other way that this changes me, it changes us. It makes us generous because Paul wrote that Bible verse that we've been thinking about. He wrote it in a letter that was encouraging some rich Christians to be generous to some poor Christians. And Paul didn't do that by sort of guilt whipping them or bashing them over the head with his wallet. He did it by reminding these Christians that Jesus had already made made them spiritually rich. And if I really get that I'm truly rich, that I'm a, I'm a child of God, I've got heaven on the horizon, then I remember that real riches isn't found in money or jobs or holidays or toys or anything. It makes me much more free to be generous with my time and my money and my gifts or whatever might make a difference to people this Christmas. I'm free to be generous. And so unlike those, those schmaltzy Christmas movies that tell me how generous I should be, this truth actually changes me from the inside out. What a great gift. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for this indescribable gift. This amazing exchange, this free offer to anyone who believes, please help us to accept it this Christmas, this gift, and help it to change everything about us. Amen.
you. Thanks so much, Mark. I was slightly worried that my name might be used as a pun this morning, but uh, thank you very much. How do you respond to a free gift? You can't can't pay for it, can't earn it. How do you respond? Well, what I can I, I give him? I, I give